My name is Hassi. I'm, the, I'm from Sacramento, Napoli Culinary Academy. That's where I run back there for uh, almost 22 years. Now, the course you're going to listen to, or this uh, subject, it takes me 10 hours to do that in our academy to the rookies, which as a students, they're coming. I don't know how I'm going to do this in one, one hour, but get ready for that. Uh, it's going to benefit you. And uh, how many restaurant owners are here? Raise your hands, please. Good. And how many future restaurant owners are here? Good. Good. You're both going to need it. Uh, one of the biggest expenses in the food and beverage business is the labor. Is, is that true? Raise your hands. Right on. Well, to be honest with you, all industry in the United States, they're all hurting with this labor situations. They always don't know how to schedule it. They got too many or not enough and all that. But mostly in restaurant business, we got an issue with it. And uh, that's what we're going to quickly talk about. But before we go further with that, uh, I got to straighten something uh, with you on a cost situation. Because traditional, um, traditional schedule, which I have a good friend, I tried to teach her this, and she says, I don't have time, I don't have time, leave. And that's where they get hurt. So uh, I always divide the whole restaurant's sale or, or net sale daily. So we're talking daily. Okay, you need to make your schedule daily, okay? But one thing is very important to know to begin with, I have a four divisions always. If I have $1,000 here today for Monday, I wanna cut it in four ways. The food, or could be bar, that's your labor, and that's your fix, and is your profit. That's how I cut them to begin, to just simplify it for you. So. If you follow this, today we're talking about this area. This can affect this area. If you do it wrong, that's where you're going to get hurt. You agree with that? So there's two things happening here. One is your desire, what you like to have as a labor, or what your budget tells you to have. There's two different things, all right? Most of us like the luxury of having a, whatever we want as a labor. I want to I open the door, I want a hostess, I want this, I want that, that's fine. Except, I have a sheet here which I made. I'm going to show you the bigger one right there. I'm going to pass a bunch of this around. You're going to need one of this. We're going to pass a bunch of them around. You write your positions positions. Most of us restaurant people, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, you are in the mercy of your own staff when they want to work. I don't want to work Sunday. I want to work Monday. I want to work Tuesday. So I, was, oh, I can't. I got a kid here. I got a kid there. You know, we're always trying to accommodate them. But this time, we're not going to do that. We're going to accommodate the restaurant. In the food business, when you're running an operation, you can go with your heart and feeling, or you can go with your logic. And fortunately, I know it's cold to say that, you're gonna have to push the heart away and go with the logic part. Logic talks to you different, all right? Logic is not gonna accommodate your staff, it's gonna accommodate the restaurant. You with me? All right. So we made this form, and we're not with any company to sell you any, uh, POS or machinery or anything else. This is just a simple pencil and paper work, but then you can put in your POS and the uh, rest is a history. In this piece of paper here, you're gonna choose what positions you like to have in your restaurant. Positions, not hours. So, how many shifts do you want? How many servers do you want? All that. That's where you write down, and I give you a bunch of papers 
so you can keep it, take it with you, mark it right now, however you want to do it, okay? Once you do that, we're working on the desire part, what you like to have in your restaurant. We're not talking budget yet. All right, good. So go ahead and write down when you get the sheet, oh, I need this, I need a prep cook, I need a server, a da, 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 dishwasher, and all that. Then in front of it, write down what time you want them to start, what time you want them to go home. By the way, this is only for Monday. There's a reason behind it. You're going to have to make maybe seven of them if you're open seven days a week. If you open six days a week, you need to make six of them. And that's your foundation, and it goes inside the transparency paper like this, sheet protectors. And you don't touch it no more until the next quarter when the sales are changing. Then we can change it again. But right now, let's just figure on this Monday, and that's what you got to do. So just show what hours, who works when, who, who you like him to work when. Then, if you move, I'm going to give you the papers in a moment. But when you move down between 9 o'clock, between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock, there's a little square down here. Total hours are what? There's one hour only you used here. In this 9 and 10, you used 1, 2, 3 hours. You write 3 hours. Got it? Is that clear to you? When you get the paper, that's what you got to do. First, positions, 2 hours that you like to have. We're not talking budget yet. Again, it's a luxury you like to have. Then when I hit you with the budget, then the compromise starts. All right? All right. Once you've finished up all the hours out here, go ahead and total them up and write it right there. 80 hours, 70 hours, whatever hours they are. Once you write that down, your job for your desire is finished. Now we want to do what the budget tells you to do. That's where the feeling goes away, the logic comes forward, okay? Now, how do you get to the budget? We have two scenarios for budget. One, pre-operation restaurant that is already running. Either you bought it or you have it, or you're trying to buy it or any of those. That's called history of the sale, that's available. That's what we're gonna talk about if you have a history of the sale. Second one is you haven't got the restaurant, you're just building, it's brand new, doesn't have any history. So I wanna show you both of them real quick. The one that doesn't have a history, it's easier to come up with some estimated numbers, it's close to reality, but in a couple of two or two, three weeks, you're gonna have the reality because you're gonna have some sales, the history is gonna be made, right? But to begin with, you don't have to sell. So let's leave that alone for a minute and work on the one you have a sale, okay? The one you have a sale, I have some papers. I wanna give it to someone in the front and they can pass it on, okay? Uh, start a bunch of it here, if you can pass that, I hope you have enough of those, a bunch of it here, just pass one around if you want to keep one. Let me see if there's uh, more here I got. That's the filled in one, it's good, Let's let them see that one. All right, I'll just pass it, so everyone can pass it on. Now, Monday sale, we're talking about Monday sale, then you can figure out your Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's an estimated sale, or your POS history can tell you that. You got a $1,000 sale on a Monday. Well, back to here, if I divide my $1,000 sale on Monday, I like to give 25%, I know it's a dream, but let's see, 25 fix, fix is the ones who don't know, that's your rent, that things doesn't change, whether you have a customer or not. Your insurance, your utilities, your all this stuff that you pay, whether doors open or not. That's your fix. Labor, 25%. Food cost, hopefully 25%. If you keep all that right, you're gonna go home with 25%, good luck. Okay? 
But what we need to do, let's assume start with the 25%. Okay? Let's start with that. 25% of a thousand dollar is what? $250. Okay? Right there. Well, wait a minute. I'm gonna do a three thousand dollar sale. Penny just changed my sale. I got higher. I'm happy now. Three thousand dollar sale. Monday night. Good. Monday all day. If there's a three thousand dollar, twenty five percent of the three thousand seven hundred fifty. Let's split that all the way across the line. Seven fifty for a food. Seven fifty labor fixed and a profit. Let's take the labor. That $750 is the only money you got for Monday night to spend for your labor. Sorry about that. How do you turn that to hours? Divide that by average per hour your labor is paid. Let's just pick 11 bucks. Okay? Just to average. And simply, you can do that. Look at your payroll. You're paying somebody $13, somebody $14, somebody $10, somebody, whatever your uh, you know, just make an average and come up. We just came up with 11 bucks. Okay. If you divide that number by $11, it comes out to how many hours? 70. No, it comes out to how many hours? 16. 68 hours. Good job. What's the difference between the 68 hours and the one you made? You had the 74 hours. Your desire was 74 hours. Your budget tells you 68 hours. How much difference? Six what? Plus. You're six too much, right? Now start working on your schedule. No, two possibilities. One, you look around and say, you know, I can cut this guy half an hour here, change your lines. You six hours challenge you have in your hand. Work with it. If you couldn't, there's times that you can't because you're going to hurt the service in the restaurant. If I'm a manager and some company hires me, yes. Yeah, there's more? Well, I'm going to give him this one that I already made. Why don't you, uh, here, I'll give you two sections. You guys, here, pass it around, pass it around. Let me give that lady here. Why don't you pass this, some of them? And you're going to make some copies afterwards, too. Now, folks, listen to me. Let's say somebody hired me to run their restaurant, and I go there, I'll do all that stuff, and I found out I need to keep my 74 hours, otherwise I'm going to hurt the restaurant's service. But the budget, the boss is telling me, listen, you're only going to run 60 hours. That's our budget, 25% labor costs. So I'm caught between a reality and what I really need. That's called compromising. I can walk to my boss and tell him, look, I can probably cut another three, four hours, but after that, your service is gonna get hurt, your quality is gonna get hurt, product's gonna get hurt, I can't go lower. He's gonna say, all right, I'll live with it. There you are, then all of a sudden, I don't have a 25%. Now I have what? 30%. That means we just lost the 5% here. We're going home with 20%, but labor went up to 30%. That's fine. I know places, they're running 32%. They're still making money. But first, you have to have a foundation what the reality is. The reality is I need to have a 68 hours. Now I'm fighting the system <clears throat> to see if I can reach close to 68 hours without hurting the system. But if you don't have any of those, you have a traditional schedule. Let me tell you how that looks like. You have a traditional schedule for me. The traditional schedule, most of you probably playing with it, and I know it, it is one side of it, it says, that's not it. It's one side of it, it says Linda, Mike, Kathy, all those names, top says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then there's a bunch of squares, and then, and please tell me this, about 
Tuesday or Wednesday, you can't even read this anymore because you scratch it off. Kathy's not coming to work to change the hours with this guy. How many, how many of that happened to you? Look at this hands. By Friday, you can't read your own schedule. The staff can't read it either because it's a mess. That's called traditional schedule. Because, well, you don't have a choice. You've got to keep going back here and changing Linda, scratch that off, and right here is small the mic. The mic is off. Here. Oh, oh, my, this is the biggest mess I've ever seen. And plus, you've got to listen to your staff. Now, when we make a schedule, which is, looks like something like this, seven of them, is hanging on the wall. It says Monday. Now, I'm, let's say I'm interviewing a bunch of staff, right? And I like somebody a lot, right? And I say, listen, you're one of the servers. You got a good record. You got a good background. You got all that. This is what I need servers for. Which one do you want to pick? Now, I give them a choice. If you're worried about the feeling part of it, there it is. That's the only feeling you, they're going to get. Choose from here. I can't choose what your needs are. I got to choose what the restaurant's needs are. So pick from here. Now, another good part of it is that it's a real nice one, which I hang all this here. You say, where's the names? There's a little stickers here you buy. OK, you take one of the stickers. You simply put it in one of those lines, and you write Mike on it. Mike calls in sick. Linda was going to work that. Pull that off. Put another sticker, write Mike on it. The structure doesn't change. The structure stays as is. So anybody want to do any changes? Of course, they get your approval, but then you can just simply take the sticker. You don't mess up the whole, whole thing all over the place, which most of you do. I know. I've been there. I go to different restaurants. I say, so where's your schedule? I see on the wall. Oh, my God. That looks like ants are inside of it. You know, it is bad. But, but, now, the issue... The issue between the desire and the budget is a gap that you need to work on. There's restaurants, I mean, 25% don't get stuck on the 25%. You could be running at 19%, and restaurants are running 16%, and there's restaurants running 32%. It depends what the true needs are. But to begin with, always put your desire, what I like to have, write all that down. Then add up the numbers, then go back to your budget. What do I make Monday? 3,000. What's 25% of 3,000? Okay, how many hours is that divided by number of uh, uh, average, uh, average pay payroll? Dollar, 11 bucks. This is how many hours I'm supposed to have. Well, look, I've got that much hours. That's where your, that's where your brain's got to work. You're going to sit in your office and you're going to figure that out. Once you put it out, don't be in your mercy of your staff telling you, I can't work that hours, but somebody will. This is the schedule we made. <clears throat> That's a need. If you stick with that policy, if you stick with that policy, seven of them is hanging on the wall. It's always clear. You don't have to keep going back and writing things. You just take your sticker up, put another sticker on, names changing here, but well, you don't change hours. Now, now, you're in the middle of a shift. Uh, you're going to close the place at 9 o'clock. It's about 2 o'clock. Storm is hitting outside. Your sail is halfway. You're not even reaching that area you want. You know your sail is not going to make it to 3,000. That's a different story. You can compromise because payroll by, by punch cards or POS system, that's the real stuff that's going to happen in the evening. You have... You're hoping this is what's going to happen to you, but then you're going to have to manage what reality is going to happen. Rea reality is you say, I'm not going to make 3000 today. So who wants to go home? Believe me, a lot of hands will go up right away. <laughs> That's a lot of staff all, all go home. Who do you send home? The worst of the worst. <laughs> Keep your best obvious reasons. You don't send your main cook home, okay? But you can send your prep cook home and have the dishwasher to prep and uh, you know, all that stuff that you know. So 
middle of a shift, you're still playing with this schedule, but you don't touch the schedule. But results are going to be great because you know you're not going to hit the 3,000 cap. You're down to almost 2,500 or 2,200, and you need to release some people quickly to keep the percentages. Okay, so far, let's, let's stop for a minute. Any question right now? Go ahead. Let's start with you. Go ahead. No, you have to decide the percentage to begin with what you want it to be. What happens is a different story, but you have to decide, you want to run at 25%, your sale is changing, but it's still keeping 25% labor. Cross the road, all the way across the road. Okay, next question. Um, are you saying you're the operator of this establishment, but you're not always there every night? How do you make sure your managers that you set the place like you're doing a That's called training. <laughs> Pick a right manager and train them well. Control. Today you have the telephones. I have other establishments I work with. I look at my cell phone. I see how busy they are over time. Oh, the question is, is how do you have the guy compromise in the middle of a shift to send somebody home or not? How do you do that? That's what he's asking for. We said training. Train your staff, train your manager, or pick somebody who, who understands all this. Have them call me. <laughs> Next, please. You said about the storm. Our, our sales doubled during the storm. You have any idea how your, your, what, what, what doubled did, during the storm? Your sale doubled or your labor doubled? Sales. Sales doubled during the storm. So you needed to ask for more people. Yeah. Is there any proven like, system? No. Or you system? still keep the same thing. You keep the same. Well, stop calling. <laughs> Start calling Joe and Mike. Say, listen, I give you off on Monday. I need you here. Joe, I need you here. Linda, I need you here. But don't touch the main uh, operation, main sheet. Let it go because next week is going to be the same again. So that's fine because your sale is going to you know, cover the, cover the uh, losses. You know, question, go ahead. What do you think like having a salary manager on some days? How, how many what? Like But who's running it? Who's running the show on the other two days? An hourly key holder or something like that. Well, let's train that guy because he is, uh, see. Right, because you're accounting for the sales. So a salary manager is an hourly, right? Oh, you talk about salary people. I would divide the salary again by the approximate hours they're doing. That's how I come up with the average hourly. Even if somebody's getting paid a couple thousand dollars a month. I will know how many hours they're putting as a manager, what's the expectation is, and I'll divide that number, and I'll still come up with some kind of number. He's gonna find he's not gonna he's not gonna be happy because he's gonna find he's getting four dollars an hour. <laughs> when you when you cut the when you give somebody a salary, you know you're cheating them, but that's all that's fine. <laughs> because those poor guys are putting so many hours, <laughs> you don't wanna let them know how many hours they're doing. <laughs> Next to a question there. Was that the same thing? Oh, well, I mean I know when we do our restaurants, we divide our general managers and our assistant managers and gross salary through the seven day work week. And, and you know how many hours they're putting? You know how many hours of work because they have to put it on the schedule, which is supposed to get the owners and get something. Tremendous. You, you're happy with that result? I am. Um, we run a tight ship on that. I was wondering, like most restaurants that I've worked at before the pizza was that the GMs and the assistants and the bar manager. Their salaries aren't in there. There's the hourly employee, like delivery driver, phone girl, well, you know, the, the, the gentleman is asking, or he's telling us actually, uh, he's got other positions which they're getting paid, but they're not in the schedule. <clears throat> is that true? Is that how you? But remember, anyone who's getting paid by your operation, it is part of the schedule that you have. Somehow or another, it's got to be part of that. Because you are, in reality, you're paying them. So why can't we figure them out? Go ahead. It's got to be labeled. It's not fixed. They know what you're saying. Salary it's not a fix. He's right. Ab Absolutely. You're right. It, 
it, it's it's. As the gentleman said, it's still a labor, isn't it? At one point, because in reality, we got to pay the guy. Somehow, we got to pay. Your base schedule that you put on the wall and everybody keep looking at it, that's the one, that foundation is very, very close to your budget. Because your budget, you already know what it is, Mondays versus Friday. So you can't have that kind of... I mean, not this one, the old one, the traditional one. And uh, you need to have a all scheduled for Friday who is doing what. You need to have those hours. Uh -oh. So I think the important part of it is it gets pretty confusing in one area, but it's quite simple to do the uh, fix versus the labor. That was the question that he brought in. Any other question? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to make the money that day. The money okay. doesn't come in until weeks, weeks later, or even maybe a couple of days later. It, is that happens every week? That happens almost every week. Every yeah. week. I mean, okay. We have very large orders that will come in, and they'll pay two, three thousand dollars to have us prepare for weeks and weeks. Mm -hmm. But then once that check comes in, it comes in for the next month, and we will pay the staff. <clears throat> Weeks later. But then weeks later, we don't, we don't need that much staff for the to be slow. So what's the question? So how do you balance the profit versus the hours when they don't go together, when they don't overlap? Remember, uh, profit, we're trying to do it on a schedule daily, but you need to do it when in that kind of position, weekly or even monthly. You can go as far as... Remember, uh, there's a formula here, which uh, you need to use that. And that formula is your OPTC, which is optimum cost of your labor. This is a true stuff, then, when you're really trying to figure out how much profit is. It's called OPTC. Optimum cost, that includes your bookkeeper, that everything else you got to pay for payroll. That's OPTC. That divided by the sale equals to a labor cost. If your OPTC was $1,000, you pay the labor, you divide this by a $4,000 sale, you got a 25% labor cost. That's what you got. So daily that's not that's not your job to do daily is you make your schedule put on the wall forget about it weekly or monthly managers they like to know how far they are are they doing monthly even annually let's go even further end of the year you paid labor bookkeepers everybody else hundred thousand dollars okay your sale was what <coughs> Six hundred thousand dollars. Okay, just divide this by that. You get a food cost. You get a labor cost. So that's the OPTC by itself. So we're very simply. I, I can. By the way, the same same figures works for food cost, folks. I know it's not a food class. We can do the same thing for food cost. But remember, food cost is not only edible items. The paper plate is a food cost. The straw is a food cost. The plastic bag is a food cost. They're all food costs. So things I say goes and it doesn't come back as a food cost. Or if it comes back, it's not usable anymore. So same formula works for food. Question? Any question on that side? 
Okay, OPTC. Daily sale, remember, that's really, really crucial. You can get that from your history, from your POS. It doesn't matter if people come in and punch in in POS or not. POS is just a machine, it's a computer. It doesn't have a brain to say who works, who doesn't work. You're gonna have to make that decision. The positions, all that is in, all in your hand. And no one else can do that except you. Any question in that area? Yes, sir. I'll do every quarter. I'll do every quarter, but my, if I'm a good so manager, I keep my years. eyes on it even monthly if you're growing that fast. Well, it's not that fast anymore. But, but quarterly will be a good issue. But I'm saying if I'm coming up saying that I have 3,000 in sales on Monday, uh -huh. you, should I go back three or four Mondays to get that average to know to project for the next? Definitely month? go get an average of yeah, three, four weeks. Three, four weeks, yes. you think? A couple of months. Check, check it out and see what, where averages are. Yes, sir. Same thing? Yeah, go back and check the history about three, four weeks, and you're going to get the idea what, what really happens in that area. Yes, sir. Pull that down, get in your office, and start making a schedule according to the slow sales. Okay. Put them up again. And then call people in. And Tell them come in and choose, the, choose what you made. And remember, the minute you fall into the trap of letting the employees decide when they work, the trouble already started. You can't have that. You just have to stay away from that area that uh, I know you're trying to make your best people happy and all that, best choice I can give them so you can choose one of these lines. One of the lines, yes sir, go ahead. I have a question. What is your labor for the four months that you've been open and you Thank you. Anybody else on that subject? Now, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. <clears throat> you in between the two shifts you're talking about, right? Okay. Always over. Well, because the danger is you're going to hurt, uh, uh, it's called Murphy's Law. You know, what's going to happen if you, let, let me clarify something for you. Uh, it's going to really help you out. <clears throat> Especially the gentleman said that my sales are down right now, and this is a season sales go down. When you reach the skeleton situation, you can't send the last dishwasher, last this, last that, and sell so low, it's not even answering that, okay? At this point, some folks decide to still cut. And that cutting is gonna really hurt the service and uh, quality. I think the focus should at that stage be put on the sale versus the labor. When you're reaching a skeleton situation and it can't do anything else anymore, you better start focus. Because see, 80% of your thoughts are, how do I cut, how do I cut? How do I get this payroll lower? How do I do this? This is, comes in everybody's mind when things are bad. But if you take that 80% focus and turn it, how do I make myself go higher this week? How do I do that? Leave about 10% for that 
get rid of some people, leave 90% to focus, how do I get it up? What do I do? If you work in that area, uh, see, focus is really important. It has a lot of power. If you walk under the sun, you get warm. Well, take the same sun, hold the magnifying glass on a piece of paper. It's going to burn the paper. It's going to catch on fire. It's the same sun, but it wasn't burning me, but it burned the paper because I focused the, the light into one point and it stopped burning. You put your focus on the cell, believe me, you're going to do amazing things. And when a schedule is so flat, so low, there's nothing else you can do. You better work on the sale or sell the place. <laughs> Just do something about it. All right. Now, any question on the, when you want to do a, uh, a schedule for a restaurant, there's a bunch of things you need uh, to create a schedule. Look at all those topics. I'm going to just say, do you need the daily sale to make a schedule? Yes. Just tell me yes or no. Yes. What about food purchases? Do you need that to make a schedule? No. No. Bar sale. Because you've got to make a schedule for a bar. You need the bar sale. Otherwise, you can't make a schedule. Bar purchases? No. no. Inventory count? No. no. Restaurant seating capacity. That's for a new restaurant hasn't been opened yet. That's how you're going to find the seats. Capacity of a restaurant, average price of the entree on a menu, multiplied by capacity, it becomes the average sale. Yes. <laughs> what about what? Delivery is part of the schedule. If you're paying them. No, we're not there. We're trying to figure out how many hours we need for, uh, watch this, watch this, wait, wait. If you have the restaurant capacity seating, okay, and a price of your entree average, let's say it's 10 bucks your average entree is. Entree is a main course, what, like a, one size of the pizza, if you have a pizzeria. You multiply that together, it gives you estimated sales. And it's not going to be accurate, but it's going to be pretty close to accuracy because you don't have no other history. Wait a couple of weeks to get a history. But for now, that's what you got. Capacity times average price of the menu. It gives you a dollar a month of sale. Take a 25%, 22%, 19% of that, it becomes your labor money. Divide that by average paying for labor, it becomes hours available for that day, including your driver, your delivery guy. That's part of it. Does that answer your question? Well, it is tough. Work after the class, I'll work with you on that. You just have to really be uh, cautious with how to do this, okay? Any question on this one so far? Okay, let's go through this. Type of service in restaurant. It will help you as a new restaurant, it will help you. But as a restaurant running already, that's not necessary even. We already know what positions we need. Hours of restaurant, okay, this is the hourly restaurant cash register reading. It's a good thing to have your hourly reading because you can focus your peak area versus a slow area on your schedule. That really helps you out. I, I always do hourly readings. That will really help you where to. Uh, if you notice on, the, on your sheet you're holding, you can visually see where the peak hours are. You can just look at it and see, there it is, peak hours. And there's slow hours. You don't already see that. You don't even have to see the numbers anymore by how you do that, okay? Next is, uh, well, annual sale, you need it, not for making a schedule, but sometimes at the end of the year, you may need that. Total, no, that's nothing. Taxable items, nothing. Chinaware, nothing. Operation hours, you do. For schedule, you need your hours of operation. Positions, I told you to begin with, put your positions down. You need to know who does what. Deliveries, there's your answer right there for delivery people. 
you don't need that because it's a position. You can put it on your schedule. You can write it right there. Okay. Access payroll identification. That means uh, $11 an hour, $10 an hour, whatever it is. Operation days, of course, are you open seven days a week or six days a week? What are you? Because you need six schedules or seven schedules. Cost per plate, that means per entree. What's your average entree cost? On a pizzeria, it's tough to say, well, luck in your place. What's your best seller? Eight inch, 10 inch, 16 inch pizza, what is it? There you are, that's perfect. How much? Uh, every one, the average order is about $33. So it's not based on entrees, it's based on orders because typically people like to But your one size pizza, I know it's got different toppings and all that stuff, but what's the average price of the one? Just one, no drinks, no beer, no nothing. Fifth, there's your average, 15 bucks. <clears throat> That's how you figure out. Because you gotta figure out, okay, somebody's gonna come and order that pizza, they're not gonna have anything else, okay? I don't understand it. That's quite all right. <laughs> okay, did anybody understand what the gentleman said? Yes. No, that's the average. You said that's a that's the average check going on. That's that's different. No, you could use that average check, but uh, to begin with, you don't need that. You just need the entree prices or one number because average check can vary. Very much so. Why don't you look at the sale of the day, that day? That's what you really need, the sale of the day. Does it help you? End of the day, net sale minus the tax, $2,000, whatever it is, that's your sale. Go with that one. Would that help you? Okay, any question here? Okay. Once you, once you put your uh, schedule on the wall for six or seven days, and you got the stickers, and you're gonna put the stickers on the schedule, and I'm gonna pass this, and uh, you folks just take a peek at it and pass it to someone else from here. You put them in a transparency, you can make them larger and hang them there, it says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Pass this around after you look at it. Okay. The stickers, you can pick up any color stickers in any stationery store. And uh, on a transparency, they work just fine. Just put one on, put somebody's name on it. 